What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. As you saw from the title screen, this is Dodgers edition of this week's TTM videos. And in this video, I'm going to share with you three recent returns from some former Dodger baseball players and profile each one of their careers and tell you a little bit about their careers. So let's jump into this first one, return from Spokane, Washington. And this is return on three of three from Mr. Jim Barbary. And Jim Barbary, as far as I know, this is his only card, his only major league card at least. So let me tell you about Jim Barbary and his career in baseball. Jim Barbary grew up in New York, and in 1953, his Little League team played in the championship game of the Little League World Series. Well, unfortunately, they didn't win in 1953, but in 1954, his team actually won the championship, defeating Colton, California in the final game. A few years later, Barbary signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers in 1960 and spent that season with two of their lower-level farm teams the Panama City Flyers, and the Green Bay Dodgers. But he combined 296 with 8 home runs, 71 RBIs, and 123 games. In 1961, he played for the Salem Dodgers, hitting 12 home runs and collecting 49 RBIs while batting 312 in 115 games. Barbary spent the 1962 with their AAA Omaha affiliate, appearing in 115 games while batting 265 with 6 home runs, and 50 RBIs playing the infield and the outfield. The following year in 1963, he would uh, move with the team to their affiliate in Spokane, Washington, and from 1963 to 1966, he would be in Spokane playing for their AAA affiliate. He would continue to play for Spokane after 1966, but in 1966, Jim would get his call to the major leagues on July 5th, 1966. Well, with the Dodgers in that time, in the 39 games that he was up starting July 5th, Barbary made the best of his time starting against the Cincinnati Reds as the starting left fielder. He didn't get a hit the first day at the plate, but did collect a walk and got a stolen base. His first major league hit came the very next day against famed pitcher Milt Pappas of the Reds. Barbary appeared in a total of 39 regular season games with the Dodgers that year, including 8 starts in right field, 9 starts in left field. He batted 280, going 23 for 82, while collecting 3 RBIs and scoring 9 runs. The Dodgers would go on to win the National League pennant that year with a 95-67 and record and would face off against the Baltimore Orioles. Eventually, the Dodgers would be swept by the Orioles in that World Series, However, Jim did get a chance and made one appearance pitch hitting for the pitcher spot in the fourth inning of Game 1 of that World Series. After the 66 season, Jim was sent back to Spokane and he would spend the next three years in the Dodgers AAA affiliate, putting up decent numbers and never getting a call back to Los Angeles. Well, after the 1969 season completed, uh, Jim decided to go overseas, which a lot of players did, did at that time, and he signed a contract to play in the Nippon Professional Baseball League, Japanese Baseball League, for the Chinichai Dragons, and that was his last season in professional baseball. Well, with the Dragons, he batted a subpar of 188, appearing in 93 games, but did hit nine home runs, but did have 31 RBIs that season. After he re came back from Japan, he and his wife moved back to Spokane, which, surprise, surprise, he spent most of his uh, AAA playing career for Spokane, so he moved back to Spokane and started another career. Uh, another nice thing is in 2011, his uh, hometown area in New York actually elected him in their first ever uh, inaugural induction in the Capital District Baseball Hall of Fame. So, I don't get it. The guy had some excellent numbers. He was kind of a utility outfielder, infielder type. Uh, he had a left-handed bat, but for whatever reason, the Dodgers did not give him a chance to come back to the majors to show him what he could do. 
after that 1966 season. Uh, I mean, this is one of those guys that I think would have benefited immensely if the Dodgers would have just traded him to another team. I mean, this guy would have been a major leaguer if he would have played for, I don't know, the Montreal Expos, the expansion team, or, you know, any of those teams because it's just crazy that the guy bats 280, he does the job that he's asked to do, and then he never is to play in the major leagues again. So just just mind-boggling that he didn't get uh, more of a chance than just that one season with the Dodgers. So very happy to add Jim to the collection and share his story, and we'll move on to the next Dodger. All right, so this next one is postmarked from California, and it is returned from former Dodgers catcher Jim Campanis Sr., on one, two, three, and four. And you guys may have recognized these from my previous uh, pickup videos from the card shows. I picked up the rookie card with Bill Singer and Campanis on it. And my hope is to send these two to Bill Singer and have him complete those. He's a pretty good through the mail signer. So hopefully you'll be seeing those here pretty soon as well. But let me tell you about Jim Campanis Sr. and talk to you about him and his lifelong career in baseball. It is amazing um, the lineage that he has in baseball. So starting out, Jim Campanis is the son of Al Campanis, who is the longtime general manager of the Dodgers. So Jim, the son of Al Campanis, um, also the father of Jim Campanis Jr., who we'll talk about here in a minute, who I've also profiled on this channel before. Jim signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers out of high school in California in the, right before the 1962 season. The 18-year-old got his chance to catch in the Class D League of the Los Angeles Dodgers, appearing in 102 games for the Dodgers that year in their Class D affiliate. The following year in 1963, he would move up to A-ball, appearing in 89 games for the Dodgers affiliate at 19 years old. In 1964, he would start the year out in A-ball, however, he would split the season, appearing in 118 games between single A and double A. The following year, he would primarily be in double A for 102 games. And the following year, in 1966, he would appear in 107 games uh, in triple A for the Dodgers. However, he would get his chance called up to the majors on September 20th, 1966 at 22 years old. He would appear in one game in 1966 for the Dodgers and have one at bat and not get a hit. The following year in 1967, Jim broke camp with the Dodgers at 23 years old as their backup catcher. Jim would appear in 41 games but just post a 161 record in that 1967 season. In 1968, he would be sent down to AAA where he would be the AAA catcher for 95 games. However, he would have a call-up for just four brief games for the Dodgers in that 68 season. After that 68 season concluded, Jim was traded to the Kansas City Royals. Jim would make the Royals in that 1969 season, splitting time between their AAA affiliate and catching in 30 games in the major leagues that year. In 1970, he would appear in 31 games as the backup catcher for the Royals, and after the 1970 season, the Royals would trade him in a massive player trade to the Pittsburgh Pirates to get Bruce Dow Kenton, Jerry May, and Freddie Patek. Well, with the Pirates, the Pirates in 1971 decided to send Campanis to the minor leagues, and he split time between Double A AA and Triple A in 103 games for the Pirates affiliates that year. 1972, he would spend the entire season in Double A for the Pirates. In 1973, he would get promoted back up to AAA for the Pirates and would appear in six games for the Pirates of that 1973 season. Well, in 1974, as a player, he would be sent back down to AAA, and at 30 years old, he would appear in 129 games for the Pirates' AAA affiliate, posting a 277 batting average and not get called up to the majors after that 1970 season. After that 73 season, Campanis would uh, retire as a player and move back to California. He would uh, then get a job working for the Dodgers. Surprise, surprise, his father was still the general manager at the time. 
Uh, he would go on to uh, have a son, Jim Campanis Jr., who would appear uh, on the 1988 gold medal winning Team USA team. So if you watch my Team USA videos ever, you'll see Jim Campanis Jr. This is his son. Uh, in addition to that, Jim Campanis Jr. also wrote a book talking about his experiences with his father and his grandfather. So you can definitely check that book out. I, I have yet to get my hands on a copy, but I'm actually thinking of writing Jim Campanis Jr. and asking him how I can get one. He might reply with, you can go on Amazon and get one. So uh, I, I'm going to try to track this book down because I think that would make a great read, um, especially with the lineage of Dodger history, you know, uh, between his father and his grandfather. So hopefully again, like I said, you'll be seeing these Bill Singer cards in the future and we'll move on to the final Dodger. Now, unfortunately, this individual, I do not have a card of him as a Dodger. However, once I say the name, you're going to be very familiar with him if you're a Dodger fan. And I am talking about former Dodgers coach Joey Malfitano on one, two, three, and finally a fourth. And if you can see really closely, on this Charlie Fox Giants card, I actually have Charlie Fox's autograph. Uh, Joey signed this for me up here in the corner. He was a coach on Charlie Fox's staff, but I got Charlie Fox to sign this many, many years ago through the mail. And I was very hesitant to mail this, but I saw that uh, Joe was a very good signer through the mail. So I decided to roll the dice, sending you know the Charlie Fox autograph. And luckily enough, Joe signed it for me and sent it back. Unfortunately, I didn't get John McNamara to sign this before he passed away. But, oh well. It's signed by these two guys at least. So let me tell you about Joe Amalfitano and his career in baseball. Not just as a player, but also as a coach. Amalfitano grew up in California. Where he attended St. Anthony High School in Long Beach later Loyola University, and also the University of Southern California. Because he signed as a bonus contract when he became a professional player in 1954, Amafatano spent the first two years of his pro career sitting on the bench for the New York Giants under the terms the rule then were enforced. But after four years in the minor leagues, he returned to the National League in 1960 and played through the middle of the 1967 season for the Giants. After appearing in just under 50 games from 1954 to 55 with the Giants, uh, he became a regular, uh, playing in 106 games in 1960 at the age of 26 years old for the Giants, where he posted a 277 batting average while playing third base and second base. In 1961, he appeared in 109 games for the Giants, and after the 1961 season, he was actually selected in the expansion draft by the Houston Colt 45s. Well, the Colt 45s in 1962 as an expansion team put him on their roster and he appeared in 117 games, batting 237. Well, after the 62 season, the Colts decided to send him back to the San Francisco Giants. And this time with the Giants, his second stint with the Giants, he would split time between their AAA affiliate and in 1963 with their major league affiliate appearing in 54 games. Well after that 63 season he went into spring training expecting to be a San Francisco Giant but right before the 1964 season started the Giants sold his contract to the Chicago Cubs. He would appear in a hundred games in 1964 for the Cubs posting a 241 batting average. The following year in 65 he would be uh, delegated to a utility role and appear in just 67 games for the Cubs. In the following year in 1966, he would appear in just 41 games for the Cubs and also 17 in their AAA affiliate. And on June 27, 1967, in his final season as a player, Joey hung up the cleats to become a coach for the Cubs, serving under manager and longtime San Francisco Giant, New York Giant teammate Leo DeRocher. He spent from 1967 to 71 with the Cubs uh, as a coach, then decided to go back to the Giants in 1972, as you can see here, 
from 72 to 75 as a coach with the Giants. And then he would move to the San Diego Padres from 1976 to 77. He would then return to the Chicago Cubs. And in 1979, he actually served as the Cubs interim manager after Herman Frank's resignation in September 1979, compiling just a 2-5 and five record to finish the season. That autumn, the Cubs appointed Preston Gomez as the manager, and Amafatano was retained as a coach. But when Chicago started the 1980 campaign poorly under Gomez, winning only 38 of its first 90 games, he was fired on July 25th, and Joey was named the permanent manager. So now he was the manager in one year for only a few games, and then the following year he got the manager job again. The Cubs only won 26 games, losing 46 uh, and finishing in last place under Joey, but he was asked to come back in that 1981 season. During that strike-shortened season that was a split-season campaign, his team won a total of just 38 games and losing 65, finishing last and next to last uh, in their division. At the end of the season, Joey was let go as the manager of the Cubs. He remained active in baseball, returning to coaching with the Cincinnati Reds in 1982, and then spending 16 seasons as the third base coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers, including being part of the World Series championship team. Now this is where things get amazing. So as a Dodger fan, you probably remember him being a coach, you know, on those Dodgers teams from 1983 to 1998. Well, if that wasn't enough, Joey continued working for the Dodgers, and he would continue to work in many different roles for them, and finally would retire. On January 2021, so just a couple years ago, after COVID, which would be shy of his 87th birthday. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the math with you here, okay? He was 87 years old when he finally retired from his position in baseball. That is amazing. I mean, this was somebody that made his major league debut when he was in 1954. In 1954, he made his major league debut as a player at just 20 years old. And he kept a job in baseball until he was 87 years old. 67 years in baseball. Wow. Talk about a career. I am so happy to add Joe to the collection. I called him Joey because some people call him Joey, some people call him Joe. So... And the irony of it all is his name is actually John. So jo Joseph is his middle name. So um, <laughs> I don't know what to call him. So we'll go with Joe. So I want to thank Joe for signing these cards, you know, signing this next one with Charlie Fox on there. And like I said, Charlie signed this in really light ink, so it's kind of hard to see. But also very happy to get these Jim Campanis is back with the Bill Singers on there along with these Jim Campanis and I also want to thank the other Jim, Jim Barbary for signing his cards, his only cards actually and I also want to thank you for taking the time to watch this episode and learn about some all-time Dodgers Barbary and um, sorry about the glare there Barbary and Campanas were actually teammates at the time uh, during that during that effort, and obviously they were together a long time in a lot of minor league games. So, I want to thank you for your time. I look forward to your comments below, and as always, happy collecting. <laughs>